Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to Moro Kami. In the last episode, we boarded the Ark of Yamato. In this episode, after slaying all the monsters on the Ark of Yamato one more time, we are off to the final trial. Kami Amaterasu. Just being able to see with my own eyes, I cannot tell you how much joy it brings me. It pains me that I can't remain with you until the end. But I know that you will hold us down. Now I must join the others, but I'll never forget you. How we used to play in the fields in our home. I'm afraid that you will always shine bright on our faces. As always, we yawn before getting teleported, even to our final battle.
starting the final battle against the Dark Lord Yami himself. We have none of our powers. We must resort to using our wolf kung fu. <laughs> Yami's first form. If you're curious what Yami means, his name simply means dark. There really isn't anything more to it. Um, if you want to know what he is based off of, his first form is destroying the battlefield. He is based on humanity's desire to destroy. So, his place in mythology is basically the darkness found in all humans. This is more or less both the battle of light versus dark and nature versus technology. Very Mother 3-ish, if I do so myself. His red also markings also kind of remind me of Gygas with them, but anyway... After you've attacked him enough times, he has no choice but to finally give up one of those powers that he just took from us. And with that, we have regained our true form. We get back our Divine Instruments, and we get back our power of rejuvenation, which we can use to fill in the gaps in the floor that he opens. You're gonna want to do this, though, because you lose a whole unit of energy if you fall into there. Rejuvenation was the power of Yomigami, the god of restoration that we met in the Cave of Nagi. As you see right here, I'm using Solar Flare as my Divine Instrument because it's a Sheer News weapon. It's very fitting that we have Sheer News weapon for this final battle. I also have the Thunder Beads equipped as my sub weapon because I like those a lot. I might use Thunder Reg at a later time in this fight, I haven't decided yet, but I would like all three Ultimate Divine Instruments to at least get some screen time. And we definitely gotta teach Yami a lesson here, though, because nobody hurts Waka without my say so, especially after you started being cool, and that didn't fill it in. Should have, but it didn't. No. Anyway, let's hit him around a few more times. Let's see, is he gonna give up one of our powers? Yeah! Power Slash, Power of Tachigami, the Rat God of Rending. Power Slash started off as a simple slash attack, then became Power Slash 2, which had the ability to cut through iron, and then later Power Slash 3, which could cut through solid diamond. Destroying diamond, very useful power to have on your side. Uh, these right here, if you look closely at the missiles, they're actually the clay soldiers from 100 years in the past that were Orochi's minions. So apparently, Yami had control over those too. Next, Green Sprout. Green Sprout was three powers in one. And the side effect of one of these three powers is sapping away all of my skill in drawing a frickin' circle. Anyway, this power was obtained from the three Hanagami gods. Here is Bloom, the power which enabled us to bring plants back to life as well as open up containers. We also had Water Lily, which enabled us to cross water when we could not swim over great distances. And lastly was the power of Vine, which allowed us to cross over long gaps. But what's important in this fight is the power of Bloom, because you open up Yami-like container and you can hit him around. And with that, Yami's first form goes down. And also with that, the floor gets repaired, so you don't have to worry about it anymore if you didn't get any of them. Yami's second form. He mainly uses fire for attacking here. Instead of a ball, he takes on the form of a snake once he starts his true phase. And you gotta really... Uh, I cannot seem to avoid him. This is based on humanity's desire to burn. And if he would please kindly get into his true form. There we go. He is now into his snake form. Or snake-like form, I guess. Not really truly a snake, though. But he looks more like a snake when he's first transforming. It's what it's supposed to be, at least. He's power slash, though. But I personally prefer good old divine instruments. I'm using Solar Flare simply because it's Shirinui's weapon. And Shirinui rocks. I'm gonna get out of the way. Good. Here we go! We're getting back another power. We have regained... Cherry Bomb, element of the god of explosive force, Bakugami. Cherry Bomb started off only being able to make one bomb, but then we gained the ability to make two Cherry Bombs and even three if we wanted, causing even more explosive force. Very useful power, not the best move in battle, but it was really good at destroying things that were in our way, and if it actually did work in battle, it did a lot of damage. Uh, can we use it on him right here? Let's see. Uh, it spawned underneath the platform. No. Alright, keep hitting him around, and we get back yet another run of our 13 powers. Water Spout! Power of the goddess Nuregami. With Water Spout, obviously, we can put out fire, so I don't really know how much more obvious it gets than that. 
It also enabled us to create water spouts that we could climb up to get to places we could not reach. Water spout eventually became fountain, which enabled us to activate mermaid fountains without the need for mermaid coins so that we could warp around to other fountains anywhere in the world. And also eventually became deluge, allowing us to summon rain. Next was Crescent. This power belonged to the goddess of the moon, Yumigami. Now, if you draw a crescent moon in the sky here, something really cool happens. A freaking giant spirit of Nagi comes out of nowhere, splits him in half, and you can damage him. Freaking awesome. The power of the moon, though, was normally used to turn day into night, but instead of just being a normal day into night power, it was also needed to defeat Orochi, for without the moon we could not have awoken the true power of Susano to defeat him, and later, Nagi. Go ahead and draw water to that whenever he does that. Draw a cherry bomb. And... Not do anything. Okay. There we go. And now he's going to get tougher and tougher to get up to, because he just is realizing the higher up he gets, the smaller the platforms are, and thus he has a lesser chance of us actually getting to him. But that's not going to work on us. Is he going to give us yet another power? No, it doesn't look like it, but lucky for us, he's being an idiot and using his move that we can easily counter once more. Another cherry bomb! Draw another cherry bomb! There we go! And Power Slash doesn't really seem to be doing anything. I don't really get why. I could have sworn I've done Power Slash in this phase before. Whoa! That was not good. Alright, get more. Oh! Looks like something's happening at least. And there is his snake form I was telling you about. It took him long enough to actually do that. When he does that, you just want to jump like hell because he's going to cause earthquakes and then he's going to sweep the ground! Alright, take care of that. Come on. Come here. Come here, you big ball of something. Uh, I guess here, uh, while the fight's kind of slow, I can talk about this. Some people have theorized that the Moon Tribe created Yami because they created the Ark of Yamato. Apparently he was aborted before then, uh, you know, before Waka had any knowledge of it, him being one of the Moon Tribe. And in addition to this, he has the lines and markings on him as if he was a creation of the Moon Tribe as some kind of machine. Obviously his core wasn't created by the Moon Tribe. And that's another thing, he always kind of reminded me of Lavos, how he has that little tiny core in there controlling this really big destructive thing. And now with that, his second form is done, so begins his third phase, which is, you guys are going to laugh at this, a slot machine. He used Power Slash to stop it. The slot machine, as funny as this is, is humanity's desire to gamble, not gamble as in Vegas. It's more so gamble with lives. It's kind of just a play on words. So they actually were a little bit comedic when... Actually, I can't do wind, can I? No, I cannot. Uh, is there any water I can use? Doesn't look like it. But, I can power slash those back at him, which we're going to definitely want to do. So that we can just keep on dealing damage to him. And then eventually, when he gets to a certain level of damage, no matter what, when you power slash, kind of like the slot machine with Paper Mario 2, you will always get the three Yami symbols, which will result in him falling apart and giving you a new power. No idea what it is with games and rigged slot machines and final battles that are rigged to make you win, but okay. Gale Storm, the power that I wanted, the power of Kazegami, God of Wind. This started off being able to allow us to create wind in any direction, as well as whirlwinds, and eventually became upgraded into Cyclone, allowing us to create tornadoes. Inferno, power of God of Fire, Moegami. Inferno started off in the cave of Orochi where we obtained it, allowing us to control fire. Later we obtained Fire Burst, which allowed us to create fire. And then after that, the Solar Flare itself, which we have equipped right now, which allowed us to make fire with our Divine Instruments. And coincidentally, it seems like we got a lot of fire to deal with right here. Just like my speech patterns. Power slash back at him, and whoa! I could not have dodged that, I don't think. I probably could have if I was quicker to jump, though, but I wasn't, so... I'm just gonna say there was no way I could avoid it, because it makes me look better. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Alright, if there can be a little bit comedic during this final battle, so can I. And we get back, get another ability.
Veil of Mist, the element of Kasugami, the drunken sheep god, my favorite. With Veil of Mist, we gained the ability to slow down time, and then later gained the ability Mist Warp, which allowed us to go through Mist to warp to any location we had previously been to. If you notice, when you adjust the camera just right when using Veil of Mist in the final battle, you can see the spirit of Queen Himiko who aided you in your adventure. Let's see if she'll appear here. Oh, there she is. I always thought that was a really nice touch, how they did that, you know, having the spirits of people that had helped you throughout your adventure come back to aid you in the final battle, even though they're gone. But, uh, anyway... I know time stopped and all, but come on, move faster so I can kill you already! Did not mean to do that, but okay. Uh, what's really nice is that if you happen to do that by mistake, you only get, like, two of the Yami symbols, it exposes him so that you can damage him quite easily. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep spamming that. And I believe he's actually weak to fire in this form, because you just got it. Let me see if I can... can I... Okay, now can I use fire on him? There we go, indeed he is weak to it. There we go, and that is the end of phase three. Phase four, he takes on the form of... a robot that has trouble standing up. <laughs> Again, being a little comedic. This robot... It is humanity's desire to use technology for destructive ends. And as you can see, this thing is no pushover. It's actually one of the few times that I will say that a boss in this game is pretty challenging. Uh, this is actually where I was saving my exorcism slips for, and I do not think there is any shame in using exorcism slips for this. Because he is actually pretty challenging in this form. He has a lot of HP, that's for damn sure. Even if you don't think his attacks are that hard to avoid, you can't really deny that he has a lot of HP, so this is why I'm going to be saving... I save my exorcism slips for this. Like that. Keep attacking him. And let's see if we can use one right here, because he is vulnerable. Let's see. And that didn't do much, actually. Wow. This phase can actually go on for quite a while, which is one of the reasons why I don't really like it that much, though, because it takes forever sometimes. <laughs> Not that I think it's bad that this fight keeps lasting, though, because this is an extremely well-designed fight, and I really like it a lot, though, but... Now, again, I guess they were being comedic on this, but I always wondered this, because this game has some weird obsession with buttholes. I always wondered if the powers were actually coming out of there, because it is positioned in the place for it. Uh, Catwalk. That will allow you to scale those cat statues and get items that are atop those towers. Not really that useful, actually. I was kind of hoping that it would be more useful than it was in the final battle, though, but unfortunately... It's not really. Catwalk, by the way, power of Kabegami, the cat god of walls. Catwalk did not have any upgrades, it was just simply scaling walls that had cat statues on them. Nothing more, nothing less. Now we have the power of Thunderstorm, Gekigami's power, the tiger god, god of onslaught, uh, this enabled us, as you're going to see here, to control lightning. We could draw it from clouds or we could redirect existing bolts, eventually becoming Thunderbolt, which enabled us to control to make our own bolts of lightning. And then we had, I'll go ahead and use it now, the Thunder Edge, which enabled us to have a divine instrument with the attribute of lightning that we could use anywhere we wanted, anytime we wanted. Uh, highly recommend using Veil of Mist here because you don't get that much of an opportunity to uh, attack him. You really want to just abuse the hell out of Veil of Mist as much as you can. And I somehow used Tornado. No clue I did that. I clearly drew two lines, but alright. Whatever. Once you have Thunderstorm, though, this fight doesn't really take that long. It's really not that bad once you have Thunderstorm. It doesn't take nearly as much time. Uh, can I align those somehow? Please. Doesn't look like it. So let's go that. That. Whoa, he's sweeping the ground. Can I destroy that with wind? It doesn't seem quite like this. Over it. Alright. Uh, more missiles. Again. And is he going to give us another power? Looks like it. Power of Blizzard, the Ox God Itegami's power. It enabled us to control ice. 
It also came with the power Ice Storm, which if you draw in this fight, you can see the spirit of Oki briefly if you have the camera adjusted just right, which is kind of cool. I like how they did that. Uh, and it also enabled us to freeze uh, moist air into being a solid. I really like that a lot. That was one of my favorite things they did, though. But unfortunately, the rest of the power as a whole really wasn't all that great. But I guess I can kind of understand that they give you a power that's not that great at the end, though, because they don't want you to feel like you've been missing out and using something really important throughout the course of the game. So Again, keep using Veil of Mist. Come on, Himiko, keep helping us. Uh, let's use an Exorcism Slip right here, just because we're kind of having this fight drag on for quite a while. Might as well use up the rest of them. Like I said, no shame using Exorcism Slips in my opinion on this fight. Especially because we're not really going to have much else use for them. Alright, and no more Exorcism Slip Owls. I'm only doing this for time purposes, not because I can't beat them without them. I've had some people accuse me of that. But yep, there we go.